taking aim at Donald Trump supporters. The chaotic scene, the injuries, and Donald Trump responding as we come on tonight. Also breaking the five American soldiers dead, four missing at this hour, swept away in the floods. Get out! Get out! Tonight here, the new warnings and the other major storm about to hit up and down the East Coast. The alarming videos just released by the Chicago Police Department amid questions over use of force. Was it excessive? The outrage already. Late word coming in tonight on Muhammad Ali and the road rage epidemic. Tonight, the hunt for the driver is on after a couple is run off the road by this pickup truck. And so many in on the surprise waiting for one little girl, and you'll see it. Who is our person of the week? This is ABC World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and we begin with several developing stories here on a Friday night. First, the violent and bloody clashes outside a Donald Trump event. Protesters attacking Trump supporters. Those supporters were attacked as they left the convention center in San Jose overnight. Some punched, some chased down and beaten. Others had bottles thrown at them. And just a short time ago, Donald Trump addressing the violence. ABC's Tom Yamas is in California. Tonight, Donald Trump condemning the protesters behind those bloody attacks on his supporters. They walk out and they get accosted by a bunch of thugs burning the American flag. And you know what they are? They're thugs. Anti-Trump protesters hunting down the very people who back Trump, pelting a woman with eggs. Oh, my God. Surrounding this man, trying to get away. <laughs> Other Trump supporters beaten. What happened? I was walking on the street, and this guy, like, sucker punched me in the back of the head. The protesters shaking cars, breaking taillights. Police on hand, but it seems that they didn't act quickly enough. This amid concerns about security at the upcoming Republican National Convention. Trump tonight saying he has supporters of all races standing by him, calling out one man in the crowd. Oh, look at my African-American over here. Look at him. Are you the greatest? Do you know what I'm talking about? But now Trump is embroiled in a new racially charged controversy, attacking a federal judge because he is Mexican-American. Judge Gonzalo Curiel, who was born in Indiana and is a U.S. citizen, presides over one of the lawsuits against Trump University. I have a judge who is a hater of Donald Trump. A hater. He's a hater. The judge who happens to be, we believe, Mexican, which is great. I think that's fine. But Trump now says the judge's Mexican background should disqualify him from the case, telling the New York Times, I have a Mexican judge. He's of Mexican heritage. He should have recused himself. Trump calling that a conflict of interest. And tonight, doubling down on CNN. If you are saying he can't do his job because of his race, is that not the definition of racism? No, I don't think so at all. No? no? No, he's proud of his heritage. I, I respect him for but that. But you're saying he can't do his job because of it. Uh, look, he's proud of his heritage, okay? I'm building a wall. This judge is giving us unfair rulings. Now I say why. Well, I wanna, I'm building a wall, okay? And it's a wall between Mexico, not another country. But he's, not, my, he's not from Mexico. In my opinion. He's from Indiana. He is he's Mexican, Mexican heritage, and he's very proud of it. All right, so let's get to Tom Yamas live in California tonight. And Tom, is the judge's family now responding? That's right, David. The judge couldn't comment because of the rules of the court on a pending case. But we did speak to his brother, who calls Donald Trump a blowhard. But about his own brother, Gonzalo Curiel, he says that he's objective and he always follows the letter of the law. David? Tom Yamas leading us off from California. Tom, thank you. Late today, Hillary Clinton weighing in on Trump's comments about that judge and about those bloody attacks as well. Clinton says Trump is the one who set the bad example. Here's ABC Cecilia Vega. Hillary Clinton tonight unleashing her new attack on Donald Trump. He is temperamentally unfit to be president. Clinton now blaming Trump for the violence outside his rallies. He set a very bad example. He created an environment in which it seemed to be um, acceptable for someone running for president to be inciting violence. Trump has lowered the bar. And now, is it a surprise that people who don't like him are stepping over that low bar? I don't think it is. And she has fighting words for Trump's comments about the judge presiding over his Trump University case. A man born in Indiana, which last time I checked was part of America. Clinton going even further with our Los Angeles station, KABC. We are dealing with somebody who is a demagogue, who 
would rip up our most valued beliefs. It makes no sense to me. The judge was born in Indiana. Yes, he's of Mexican heritage. Donald Trump apparently is of German heritage. I mean, what does that mean? We're all Americans. And that attack that Hillary Clinton keeps using that Donald Trump is temperamentally unfit questions his judgment and even questions his mind from those comments about the judge to those protests. And it is an attack that we will likely be hearing a lot more of over the next few months. David? Cecilia, thank you. And Hillary Clinton will sit down with George Stephanopoulos. The interview airs Sunday morning right here on This Week with George. We'll be watching. In the meantime, we turn to growing concern tonight over Muhammad Ali and his health. The boxing legend and American icon hospitalized with a respiratory issue. His current health issues, of course, complicated by his long battle with Parkinson's. ABC's Ron Claiborne tonight on what we know about the greatest. Flying like a butterfly and sting like a beast. Ah! Tonight, Muhammad Ali is in what may be the toughest fight of his life. The 74-year-old former heavyweight boxing champion hospitalized with a respiratory infection. Paramedics were called to Ali's Arizona home on Tuesday. Ali, last seen here in April, looking frail and drawn, listed in fair condition yesterday. They take no chances, and they took him in. The doctor said, hey, he's got a respiratory issue. Let's hospitalize him and watch this and, you know, just keep track of it. For the last 30 years, he's been afflicted with Parkinson's disease, the possible toll of so many blows to the head in the ring. His wife, Lonnie, steadfastly by his side, spoke of his decline. You start out, you're more of a care partner, but uh, depending on the illness, as it progresses, you become a caregiver. In his hometown of Louisville, Kentucky tonight, concern from fans. He set an example for all of us to live by, and we pray that he gets better. His daughter, Layla, posting this photo on Facebook tonight, thanking supporters. And former champ Sugar Ray Leonard tweeting, prayers and blessings to my idol, my friend, without question, the greatest of all time. And tonight, there is no update on Ali's condition. The Associated, Associated Press is reporting that family sources say that Ali's illness is much more serious than it was for his previous hospital stays, David. And tonight, we know his daughter, Layla, at his side at a hospital. All right, we're all thinking about the family tonight, and you'll stay on this, Ron, I know. Next tonight, to the two severe storms set to hit this weekend, both in the south and up and down the east coast. It comes amid a frantic search already for four American soldiers missing, swept away in the floods in Texas. Five soldiers already confirmed dead. Teams searched for the missing after their vehicle was swept away, authorities warning of major rain this weekend. And near Fort Worth, look at this, the power of those floodwaters, the SUV nearly washed away, witnesses screaming to the family inside. More on that East Coast storm in a moment, but first the South, where they are bracing already, and ABC's Neil Karlinski is in Texas. In Texas tonight, the search for answers after a catastrophe during a training exercise. Officials say military personnel were trying to close a road near Owl Creek on the sprawling base, worried it was rushing its banks. That's when the massive 11-ton light-medium tactical vehicle was swept by fast-moving waters. Remarkable since the huge and heavy truck has a high clearance and is built to handle several feet of water. Only three of the 12 on board made it out alive. Due to the quick action of some other soldiers that were training, we were able to rescue three soldiers. Outside Houston tonight, records smashed by the flooded Brazos River. And outside Fort Worth, soaked earth causing landslides, threatening these apartments. Even though many of the rivers are now starting to recede, none of this water is going to be going away anytime soon. And they also have the problem of flash flooding now from storm bursts that continue to roll in. In Granbury, Texas, this truck forcefully swept away after a huge downpour. Watch it spin, ending up pinned against a tree. Get out! Get out! Remarkably, Get out! the man, woman, and dog inside were all able to climb out in time. The governor declaring a state of disaster in 31 counties. Over 550 high water rescues across Texas over just the last several days. There is more rain in the forecast, but they're hopeful the worst of it is now behind them. David? We're all hopeful for that, Neil. Thank you. Let's get right to meteorologist Rob Marciano tracking the system about to hit here in the east. But first, Rob, the south, they can't seem to get a break here. Not at least for a day or two, David. That low that's been sitting over Texas all week long will finally start to move a little bit tomorrow, but we still have flash flood watches that are posted through tomorrow. 
Watch our future cast and as the storms fire along the Gulf Coast, but they do stretch all the way up into the Ohio River Valley as well, kind of pushed to the east by that front that will squeeze that moisture into the northeast and the highly populated I-95 corridor could see severe storms from Raleigh to Richmond, D.C., Baltimore, Philadelphia, storms with hail, damaging winds, maybe even a tornado and some of those storms will get all the way up here in New York City, David. Uh, stormy Sunday for sure. Rob Marciano tracking this all the way through the weekend. Thank you, Rob. Well, you heard about the search for those missing soldiers in Texas next tonight to a mountain training exercise gone wrong. Several members of a Green Beret unit out of Fort Carson, Colorado, came down with altitude sickness at the top of Long's Peak in Rocky Mountain National Park. 11 soldiers in the group extracted from the mountain by helicopter. No word on their condition at this hour. We turn next to images coming in from Oregon tonight, a train derailment in the Columbia River Gorge. These fiery images after 11 cars carrying crude oil jumped the tracks, sparking a fire there, black smoke visible for miles. Authorities evacuated local schools, shut down part of I-84, and put temporary flight restrictions in place. Fortunately, no one was injured. And near Seattle tonight, a collision between two school buses carrying students to an elementary school. The emergency crews rushed to the accident, setting up a triage center. 21 students and a bus driver were injured, fortunately none seriously. After what seems to have been a rear-end collision, one bus slamming in to the back of the other. Tonight, a radical change for the Chicago Police Department, releasing online evidence from scores of pending investigations involving police use of force. In one of those videos, we see an officer shoving then punching a handcuffed man inside a hospital room. And in Chicago tonight, they are bracing for the reaction. ABC's Eva Pilgrim is there. An officer points his gun at a battery suspect by a bus stop. The suspect runs towards him and the officer fires. The suspect falls to the ground but survives. Hundreds of videos released today by the city of Chicago from 101 use of force investigations still open dating back four years. We all agree that there's a lack of trust and that increased transparency is essential to rebuilding that trust. It all comes after the city took 13 months to release police dash cam footage of Officer Jason Van Dyke shooting 17-year-old Laquan McDonald 16 times on a city street. That case sparking protests. One of the videos released today shows Lisa Simmons being roughly thrown against a squad car during a 2014 block party. Her arrest, part of a lawsuit recently settled by the city, the same officer after yelling at the crowd gathered, Get out of the street and you're going to jail. Striking 30-year-old Jeremiah Smith with a baton, then forcing him to the ground. David, after today, this kind of evidence will be released 60 to 90 days after the incident. The police union calling this release irresponsible and sad. David? Eva Pilgrim in Chicago. Thanks, Eva. We turn next here on a Friday night to an ABC News exclusive. The tourists at the center of a controversy over a baby bison in Yellowstone National Park. You'll remember they put the shivering animal in the back of their SUV, hoping to save it. Instead, park rangers had to euthanize the animal. Tonight, those tourists telling ABC's Lindsay Davis why they tried to rescue the bison, arguing they had the right intentions. The tourists who took this bison from Yellowstone now breaking their silence after harsh criticism about their decision to put the baby in the back of their SUV. We picked up the bison because it was shivering. That was not the reason why we picked up the bison. We why picked up the know? bison because it was abandoned by the herd. Moments before that fateful encounter, the calf appears to be in distress. With no cell service, father and son load the newborn into the SUV and take it to the park ranger. But when the bison was returned to the herd, it was rejected and later euthanized. Did you think maybe this isn't a good idea? When I saw the calf outside shaking, I felt that, uh, you know, this was the right thing to do. I am a farmer from Africa. And many times it has happened that the poachers kill the mother and we pick up the phone and give it to the rangers. If you had to do it all over again, how would you react now? In Yellowstone Park, we would just leave it and because they say, let the nature take the course. Lindsay Davis, ABC News, New York. Lindsay, thank you. And there is still much more ahead on World News tonight this Friday, the road rage epidemic on America's highways. You're about to see the young couple run right off the highway. And tonight, the urgent search for that other driver who was in the pickup truck that rammed into the car.
the emotional outburst in court, the father lunging at his daughter's killer, the judge hitting the panic button to call for police. We'll tell you what happened next. And later tonight, a bit of a royal scolding for Prince Harry, accused of a bit of a fashion faux pas. The one thing he apparently forgot, and the World War II veterans who reminded him. You'll hear what they said coming up. Your body was made for better things than rheumatoid arthritis. Before you and your rheumatologist move to another treatment, ask if Zelljans is right for you. Zelljans is a small pill for adults with moderate to severe RA for whom methotrexate did not work well. Zelljans can reduce joint pain and swelling in as little as two weeks and help stop further joint damage. Zelljans can lower your ability to fight infections, including tuberculosis, serious, sometimes fatal infections, lymphoma, and other.